Hey everyone, in today's video, I am sharing five fun digital centers that your K through two students are sure to love. Now, even before 2020, many school initiatives surrounded around technology, having students become familiar with, you know, using Chromebooks and iPads and things like that in the classroom. Uh, 2020 and 2021 kind of ramped that up a little bit. In some ways, it was a great benefit because many schools got access to more technology than they had in the past. So now students are pretty proficient at using iPads and using Kindle Fires and using Chromebooks. I know my own two boys love themselves some technology. My son in first grade uses iPads every day in his classroom. They each have their own iPad that they can use to do independent activities. And my son in second grade has a Chromebook for the same reason. Um, they get to learn how to type on the computer. They get to do independent activities and really develop a sense of independence and autonomy over their learning. So if your students have access to a computer station, if they have their own Chromebooks, their own iPads, whatever it is, we want some independent and also engaging and effective activities for your students to complete during this time. So this video is going to share just that. So for this video, I'm gonna hop over to the computer to show you how each of these digital games is going to work. And I will also let you know that some of them are free, but the ones that aren't, I'm going to put on sale. They will be 20% off for the next 48 hours. So everything will be linked down in the description in case you wanna check them out for your own students. If you're ready to see what they are, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, Let's dive in. Digital Center number one is near and dear to my heart because my husband actually created this game. It is a website-based game, meaning any sort of technology that you have, your students can access the activity. Um, and it's so much fun. It's a phonics-based activity. It's called Letterbug. Let me show you how Letterbug works. Now, here is what Letterbug looks like. Right now, we have a CBC version. This version right here is going to cover words with digraphs and blends. Um, and we also have another version out that works on long vowel words with silent E. So let's take a look here. If we go in, here's the home screen. Here's the different categories of uh, word types you can have your students work on. Let's click SH and I'll show you what it looks like. Dish dish. So here you can hear that I have actually gone through and made sure that I say each word so students aren't just relying on the picture. Here is our letter bug. He walks around like this and students goals. The goal here is to spell the word dish. So they need to use their phonics skills to go ahead and spell the word in the correct order. Let me move this. Actually, that's fine over there. I'll move it down here. Um, each different level is set up in a different way. Um, so the puzzle will kind of look a little bit differently. There are some of these doors here that you can see where students, um, in order to get through this door, I would need to already have collected a D. Um, there are these fun, each theme. So this is the digraphs and blends version. This is a castle theme. CVC is a farm theme. And then the silent E is a space theme. So they all kind of go with that. But let's bring this here. I'm currently using the mouse to do this, but students can also use the uh, keypad. They can use the arrows on the keypad. And if they're using a device like an iPad, they can just use their finger to track the bug. So we collect D, go over to I, and then, oh, there we go. I need to go into here. Because I have the D, it opened up for me. I can collect S, and now I need H. So I'll collect from over here. Once I have all four letters, you drag my mouse, I bring it back to the actual word. And I'm not paying attention, so I'm running into things. Students will do that too. Um, I need to bring it right over here. And I got it correct. Dish. And then it will bring me to the next level. Now, I got a little crown there because I got it right on the first try. If I brought the letters and they were incorrect, they would simply go back to their spots and students could try again. Also, let me just show you quickly in the next part. Shell. Shell, they have to spell. Shell. You can see here that'll be a new level. Um, some of them have these fun little game components like this little arrow here that they go in and it comes out another side with little cobwebs on it. So just fun little gameplay. But if they accidentally, let's pretend I picked up this Y and I'm like, oh wait, I didn't wanna do that. 
uh, I knew I was supposed to get an S first or I realized that I'm spelling the word wrong, they can just restart the game by clicking or restart the level rather by clicking this arrow right here. And this takes them back to the home screen. Let's go back. So here, like I said, you can see all the different categories there are for this version of the game. And one license for one purchase of this actually gets a license for your entire classroom. So it's not like you have to buy it per student. Now, I also want to show you really quick that with all the cards that are in the Letterbug game, uh, we also created this very simple matching game that students can play online as well, since the cards were already made. So this is just another way to extend that learning. And students can play it individually with this one player, or they can play with two players, and then they can pick how many cards they want to play. So let's pretend we're doing a one player game, and we will have eight cards to start. So all students will have to do is decode the word chat, and then they have to find the image that matches. Oh, got it right in the first time. If they get it correct, it goes over here to this right side to show that they have a match. Slug, got it right again. I swear I didn't know this. Uh, let's see, bath. Okay, we have bath and math that must be. So bath, and this one must be math. And here again, it's just eight cards because we picked the eight card version. When it is complete, it shows them that they are done, they got it right, and they can go back home. End the game, yes. They could pick larger ones each time. Again, the um, cards auto-generate, so they might be different each time. They won't just get those same four words. Um, and the digraph cards are going to be all mixed together. When there are two players, just to show you what this looks like, there's a red side and a green side. Here we can see that the green is uh, the player going. So sock, they got it incorrect. So now it switches to the red part, three and three. They get a match, it'll go over to their red side and they get to go again. So it's very intuitive and easy to play for your students. This is a separate game than Letterbug, but I wanted to show you it because it uses the same cards. So again, for this matching game, we have a CVC version using all the same words that are in CVC Letterbug. Here's the digraph and blends version using all those words from that letter bug. And then the same with the uh, long vowel silent E words. We have a matching game to go with the letter bug game for that as well. So I will also link these down in the description. My own two boys and any students I've gotten to work with with that game, absolutely love it. It's addicting. It's so much fun. And because the levels get to, you know, auto generate each time, they're not completing like the same puzzle each time, even though it'll be the same words. So they get to practice making those words over and over. But those gems there with the um, with the different letter tiles, those are different every time. So they have to sift through the letters to make sure they always get the right ones. And like I mentioned, for both letter bug and the matching games, um, they are separated by skills. So I'll go ahead and link all of those in the description below. Digital center number two are these phoneme isolation sorts. Now for this unit, not only are the slides preloaded into Seesaw as well as Google Slides, depending on what you want to use with your students, but there is also a printable version. Um, I like to usually try to include all three whenever I can because it really just helps out teachers um, in different classrooms and also the same teacher on a different day might wanna do the activity a little bit differently. So let me show you how these work. Now here are the phoneme isolation sorts. Um, we have a bunch of them for beginning sounds, and then we have some for the medial sound. We only have short vowel, like CBC words, and then we have final sound as well. So here are all the beginning sound slides. Um, all students will have to do is determine if these words here have the same beginning sound as their target image, which up here is B. So they'll have to isolate that initial sound, B, and then determine, does this have the same sound, heart? No, it does not they will drag it to the thumbs down side. Grapes, g, g, nope, it does not. Over here, bag and B, they do have the same initial sound, so they'll move it here. Box, ball, etc. So they will simply just go through, decide does it have the same sound or does it not, and sort. Very simple game. The third digital center I want to share with you today is Cover Up. Now, this is a very simple one that is preloaded into Seesaw as well as Google Slides again, um, and they cover a lot of different skills. So this is what it looks like. Now, for the math cover up games, these are, I say, specifically for first grade because they will cover all the standards. That's because the skills are all included in one file. So when you download it, these are actually available. Here's what the zip file looks like. All of them are available, let me open this up so you can see a little better, in Google, in Seesaw, and then also in PowerPoint. 
um, in case your students have PowerPoint on their Chromebook, sometimes that's a little bit easier. It's up to you. These can also be great for uh, doing them with whole group practice. They can be a nice, easy warm up where students can come up um, if you want to throw it on the smart board and they can try to cover up. So let me show you what these look like. Let's go ahead and look at it in Seesaw this time. Here are the 10 skills we have included. Number since one through 10, uh, number since 11 through 20, so different ways to make these numbers. Here we have addition cover up, subtraction cover up, place value cover up, 2D shapes, 3D shapes, fractions, and money. Yeah, those are the, so I guess there's nine different ones included right now. Like I said, this continues to uh, grow. Let's try, let's look at the number sense one. Let's just do number sense one through 10. So we will click it. It will add it to our um, Seesaw library. So let's go ahead and open this up. Okay, so here's what it looks like opened up in my Seesaw account. Um, here, there are 10 different slides that students will work on and they simply have to look at the number here, one, and they have to cover up all the boxes that show the number one in any sort of way. So here we have one in a 10 frame. Here we have one triangle, one tally mark. We have one, the number word one. We have somebody putting up one finger and all the stars will always align to how many there are in each. So that way they kind of know it's a self-checking way to know if they got it correct. And then they can go to slide number two and do the same thing. And again, these are numbers one through 10. All the math games are played the exact same way where they will have something to identify over here. So for addition, it'll show a number here and students need to find the different ways, the different addition sentences uh, that make that number and they'll cover it up. Same with subtraction, 2D shapes, 3D shapes, and so on. Now I know those ones were all related to math, but I did come out with a free CVC cover up version of the game as well. It looks like this right here and it's over on TBT. So I will link that free one down in the description. If you're working on CVC words, it might be a good one for you. All right, next up, digital activity number four are these decodable comprehension passages. Now again, these will be in Seesaw, they will also be in Google, and they are printable as well, so you have all three options available. But essentially, these are some decodable passages that your students will read over and over again. Here are the decodable comprehension passages. Um, here is the bundle of them, which include a bunch of different skills, short vowels with CVC words, beginning blends, long vowels, etc. There's a whole bunch. Let's just take a look. If we were to look at the CVC ones here, um, these are, as you can see in this picture, available in a printable version. And then again, as Google Slides and Seesaw. So let's open it up in Seesaw. There are, let me move myself up here, 10 different comprehension passages that students can do. So when you're assigning this to students, if you only want them to do one at a time or two at a time, you would just delete the slides that you don't want um, and then assign it. And then when you want to, you know, add more, you can come back in and do the other ones. So Basically, students will go ahead and read this. This is with short vowel I, this one in particular. And their goal is to read it three times. So Kit is a kid. She is six. Finn is a big kid. He is 10. Kit plays tag with Finn. Finn lets Kit win. It is fun. Finn is a nice big kid. So almost every word here is decodable for students. We have plays and nice to add just a couple more real words there, but they are all at least 80% decodable. After each story, they go ahead and drag a star, or sorry, after each time they read it. So they read it three times and drag a star. And then what I like about these passages is I include some very simple comprehension questions for each one. So there's always two. What type of game do Kit and Finn play? They'd have to go back in if they don't remember, which hopefully they did, and they can type tag. Who wins the game of tag? Finn lets Kit win, so Kit. And then which of these pictures illustrates what's happening in the story? In the printable version, they draw a sketch themselves, but here they look at two images and it's the same as the Google one as well. Uh, they weren't talking about a slide at all. So here they are playing tag and we know that, you know, Finn is a bigger kid. So this is the correct one. They can drag it in the box and press the check mark. Now in Seesaw, I also like it because at the end, I will have them press this record button here and I will have them record themselves reading the story so I can hear it as well. You can't do that in Google Classroom, um, but with Seesaw, that's a version that I like to use. And last but not least, Digital Center number five are my math mysteries, which I absolutely love. These are relatively new and again, Google Classroom, Seesaw, and I have a printable hands-on version for your students, but these allow students to either work independently or work with a group to solve different math mysteries. Here's what it looks like. 
All right, and for my math mysteries, I'm gonna show you uh, this one right here. It's my newest one, and it is a number sense mystery game. I think I told you that I have them for a bunch of different skills already. Um, addition, subtraction, place value, telling time, and a few others. Um, but here is the snowy switch up. They each have their own fun little theme with their own mystery and story. I did the last ones in Seesaw, so let me show you how this one works in Google. Um, there is a printable version of this as well, like I mentioned. Um, the printable version, I usually like to store it in some sort of file folder. I print them out in color. It does include a bit of prep, just so you are aware. Um, and the digital versions, they're all included in one purchase. So like I said, you have options. But the digital version is all set up for you too, and you don't need to cut anything out or store it in any, any sort of way. So here they each have their own mystery and theme. Like I said, this one's called Snowy Switch Up. In this mystery, the snowmen went out during a windy snowstorm and lost some of their parts. Thankfully, there are clues hidden around the snow. Can you search around for clues and help each snowman find their missing parts? And then you get to meet all the different snowmen, um, Sky, Scott, Sophie, Sally, Sarah, Sammy, Seth, and Spencer. They all start with this. Um, and then here's the different parts that they're missing. So each snowman lost something and we need to kind of help them find it. Um, and again, in the printable version, these would be cut out and they kind of have to mix and match when they find which part goes to which snowman. Now here in the digital version, I made a little snowy scene and each of these clues here, since it might be hard to tell which one students have already done, they will go to a clue. They can pick any one they want. After they solve the clue, they come back here and put a little star over it because they're probably not gonna solve this entire mystery in one day. Um, in your classroom, it might take a week um, or at least a few days. So this way they just know, okay, I already solved that one. So when they come back into it to finish this mystery, they can uh, look at the clues that they haven't done yet. So if we go here, let's go to slide seven. Here we are finding Scott's missing part. I'll move myself here so we can see. Um, and here are what students are doing since this is the number sense version. Um, these are believe numbers, I think I did either zero through 10 or zero through 20, I'll have to look. Let me, I think I did this as kindergarten and first grade. So I believe they are zero through 10. Okay, so all students will have to do is figure out what number is being shown here. So here we have the number five, but then they go down to the key because each clue, um, each part of that clue has a letter represented. So five is E and they would go here and type E. Uh, next we have three. We have I, and I can tell this one's just going to spell out the number word eight. Uh, so once they find out, oh, Scott's missing part is number eight, which is over here, Scott lost his buttons. That's the one. So Scott lost his buttons, and they can go back. Like I said, they did number eight already, which was slide seven. There we go. Um, some of them won't just spell it out. Like this one here is one... This is gonna spell out one plus one. So they might have some very basic addition to solve. So here, Sky is missing this mug right here because it's one plus one equals two. Um, so that is what Sky is missing. So they will solve each clue here. And then at the end, this is just their way to kind of show the teacher, okay, we know that Sky was missing the mug. We know Scott was missing the buttons. This is kind of like their answer key at the end, their final one to show that they solved the switch up before handing it into the teacher. These are a ton of fun. My own two boys absolutely love these. And I was able to do at least one of them with a first grade classroom last year. I believe it was the place value one and they had a ball. It kept them entertained the entire math class. Now I have a whole category of those over on my TPT store because I have them in different skills, but they are so much fun and I want to continue to add more of those. So be on the lookout in the future. So there you have five of my favorite digital activities for students to do either on iPads or Chromebooks. And I love them because most of them can be done completely independently. And they're just great ways for students to review the skills that you're covering in class. I would love to know from you which one of these digital centers do you think your students would love? Let me know down in the comments. That helps me kind of gauge what types of activities I should make more of and which types of activities you guys are using in your classroom. So let me know down in the comments. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video. See you in the next one. Bye.